डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड माई टीचर फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार आई वेलकम यू टू द प्रेजेंटेशन लेक्चर ऑन लंग वॉल्यूम्स और रेस्पायरेटरी वॉल्यूम्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द टाइटल ऑफ टूडेज टॉपिक लंग वॉल्यूम्स एंड लंग वॉल्यूम्स आर ऑल्सो नॉन एज रेस्पायरेटरी वॉल्यूम्स नाउ वी हैव स्टडीड द मेकेनिज्म ऑफ ब्रीदिंग एंड in the breathing mechanism there are two process involved one is inhalation and inhalation we know taking atmospheric air <coughs> that is inhalation and expelling <coughs> the air which is present in our lung to the atmosphere that is exhalation now how much air we are going to inhale or how much air we are going to expel this thing <laughs> depends on many factors and this factor includes the health of the individual or the disease condition of the lungs or we can say the pulmonary disorder so how much volume of air the person is going to inhale or exhale that depends on individual's health or the person's health in any kind of infection or disease in the lungs okay now the different amount of air we can classify into two type one is lung volume and the lung volumes are measured by apparatus call or the instrument that is used for measuring the lung volume that instrument or apparatus is known as the spirometer and what are the lung capacities so lung capacities are the combination of various lung volumes okay so this is the first point of our discussion now moving on to the second point <clears throat> now the apparatus which is used to measure the lung volume and the lung capacity is known as the spirometer okay or it is also known as the respirometer and once this lung volume and capa capacities are measured the record which is made okay that record is known as the spirogram so in the figure i will show you uh, in the figure i will show you this apparatus spirometer and i am also going to show you the spirogram now in that you see that the inhalation the process or the mechanism of inhalation is recorded as an upward deflection whereas the exhalation is shown as a downward deflection in the record of spirometer that is known as spirogram so i am showing you <coughs> the spirogram first uh, let me show you the spirometer then i will show you the spirogram over here you see one lady okay is standing near the <coughs> spirogram uh, spirometer this is the instrument or the apparatus okay which is used to determine the lung volume and the lung capacity now uh, if you observe that the nares or the nostrils they are closed off okay so and one pipe is inserted in the lady's mouth okay and this is the apparatus now if you see this apparatus uh, in this apparatus there are two container <coughs> or two vessel or we can say there are two metal drum okay and in one drum the air is filled and the second drum the bottom one is having the filled with water and here this one is the pulley and on the pulley there is a string and with the string the pen is attached and this is the recorder and this white paper <coughs> on which 
the lung volume and capacities are recorded that paper that record is known as the spirogram okay so one more apparatus i would like to show you so that you will have the clear idea see over here the pipe is inserted here you can see there are two canisters or two vessel or two drums so in the bottom drum water is filled and this drum second one is having filled with air now this person this person is exhaling <coughs> exhaling the air from the lungs so see the level of air goes up okay and the string rotates on the pulley and at the end of the string the pen is attached and the pen is recording the record <coughs> on the spirogram okay so this is the spirogram and here the this one is the original one okay so here you see this is the spirometer okay now one more i would like to show you spirometer See this boy is using the spiral meter and this is the this one is the this lady is using the latest spirometer and what is spirometer a spirometer which measures airflow from the lungs is a valuable tool for assessing lung function okay so so this is the latest one the spirometer very very handy one very small in size okay and <coughs> earlier images that i have shown you all these are the old ones okay now these are the digital ones the spirometers and very small in size and one more thing uh, spirogram i would like to show you the spirogram so this is the this is the spirogram okay this one is the spirogram and you see inhalation is shown by upward deflection and exhalation is shown by the downward deflection in the spirogram okay we are going to discuss this entire spirogram in this lecture okay so we were on the second point we were discussing the second point of <clears throat> this lecture so this is the this second point was about the spirometer and the spirogram okay now moving on the third point of our discussion now in general generally it is observed that the lung volume the value of lung volume and the lung capacities they are larger in males when we compare to the when we compare them with the women or the females okay so lung volume and capacity are larger in males then these values are larger in taller <coughs> individual that means the person who is having a slightly greater height they are having the higher values for lung volume and capacities then in young person then the people who are living at higher altitude let's say the those people who are living on the mountains okay so in those people also the value for the lung volume and the capacity will be the higher one and and also those people who are not obese those people who are not fat okay so in those people also they will be having high lung volume and capacities now <coughs> now what is the use of this apparatus spirometer 
okay and how we are going to read this record spirogram so by reading the spirogram the doctor okay or the pulmonologist they are able to diagnose the various disorder or disease or the infection of the lung okay so this is the use of spirometer and spirogram to diagnose <coughs> the malfunction of lungs okay so this is the third point of our discussion now moving on the fourth point of our discussion now from here point number four now onwards the exam oriented discussion is going to start okay now lung volumes now in one minute a person can breathe 12 times okay so with that resting condition healthy adult person averages 12 breath per minute so we can breathe 12 times okay in one minute now in each in each breath means in each inhalation and exhalation we can move 500 ml of air into or out of the lung so we can inhale or we can ex expel 500 ml of air in each breath and this volume this 500 ml of air which we are capable of inhaling in one breath this volume is known as the tidal volume okay and it is denoted by capital V T tidal volume so this is the first lung volume tidal volume okay 500 ml of air that can that we can move in or move out from our lung that is known as tidal volume okay then so here here the key is given okay now what this key is for so this entire circular portion they are showing the lung so image this is the lung for example this entire space you can say this is our lung okay so this is the lung and outside the lung they are showing the dead space now what is dead space so we are going to discuss about the dead space also <clears throat> now we are moving on the fifth point of our discussion <clears throat> so this is the now the tidal volume that is 500 ml so it is not always fixed it varies considerably from person to person and it is not <coughs> constant in a same person okay all the time so in a in a single person at different times this tidal volume can change okay now generally in a typical adult person 70% of the tidal volume that is 350 ml of air is actually reaching to the respiratory zone of the respiratory system so so we are in short we are inhaling let's say we have inhaled 500 ml of air and out of this 500 ml 
350 ml of air is reaching to our respiratory zone now we know the respiratory zone includes respiratory bronchiole alveolar ducts alveolar sacs and alveoli so in other word we can say in our respiratory bronchiole alveolar duct and alveolar sac and alveoli together they are present 350 ml of air okay now the question arise where is that 150 ml of air okay where that air is going so where is that remaining 30 percent of air present so now we are discussing that point <coughs> so now so the remaining 30 percent that is 150 ml of air remains in the conducting airways of our respiratory system now the organs which are present or the organs which are included in the conducting zone are the nose pharynx larynx trachea bronchi bronchiole and terminal bronchiole so now we can say 150 ml of air that we breathe that we inhale uh, that air total total we have inhale 500 ml of air out of this 500 ml 150 ml of air remains present in this organs okay and collectively this conducting airways with air does not undergo respiratory exchange so that that's why all this organ together they are known as the anatomic dead space or the or this organ together they are known as the respiratory dead space because the air which is present in them is not going to exchange so let's say in the air oxygen is present that oxygen is not going to enter into our blood capillaries okay or the capillary blood which is having co2 that co2 is not going to enter into this organ so there is no gas exchange okay so that's why all this organ together they are forming anatomic dead space now an easy rule of thumb for determining now how to determine how much air is present in this anatomic dead zone so there is a easy rule of thumb okay and with this rule you can determine that how much air is present in the anatomic dead zone so how to calculate this <coughs> anatomic dead space air volume so see it is about the same in millimeter as your ideal weight in pounds so your ideal weight okay so your weight should be according to the body mass index so it should be the ideal one and the weight generally we measure the weight in kgs so you convert this kilograms into pound okay so you will get one number and then with the number you add the millimeter okay so that much ml of air remains in the anatomic dead space okay this is the method that we can calculate our okay so you can do one thing you imagine your what is your ideal weight you convert your ideal weight from kilogram to pound okay and in that number instead of pound you add millimeter 
so that much that much air remains into your anatomic dead space that is the meaning of this point okay now so that's why not all of the air that we have inhaled that is not used in gaseous exchange because some of the air let's say 30 percent of air that we have inhaled it remains into the anatomic dead space that's why okay so this is the sixth point of our discussion and this is this entire this is this is our this one is our lung this is our lung volume and we have discussed this thing okay in lung volume we have discussed this thing tidal volume we have discussed okay so tidal volume we know we now know it is 500 ml okay now we are discussing the seventh point now by taking a very deep breath you can inhale a good deal more than 500 ml let's say you are breathing right now normally that is a quiet breathing or the normal resting breathing okay now forcefully okay you try your best and try to inhale maximum air after normal inhalation so you will be able to if you are a man if you are a man then you will be able to inhale additional air and how much air you will be able to inhale so you can inhale maximum 3100 ml of air so normal normal inhalation you are inhaling 500 ml of air and then you are making all your effort you are trying your level best and then you are able to inhale additional air so if you are men then you can inhale 3 1100 ml of air so this is this is known as inspiratory reserve volume in short irv or in case if you are if you are a woman or if you are a girl then if you are inhaling 500 ml of air then if you try your level best okay and <clears throat> so if you are take a deep breath then you will be able to inhale additional 1900 ml of air so this additional 1900 ml of air for you it will be known as inspiratory reserve volume that is irv okay so uh, in the seventh point we have learned we have discussed about the irv what is irv okay so in the figure let's see once again go back to this that figure so this is so this was this was 500 ml okay tidal volume and this irv okay so this is 3000 100 ml okay in case of men or 1900 1900 ml if you are female okay so this is i r v okay so two volume we have discussed tidal volume and inspiratory reserve volume okay 
now we are going to discuss about expiratory reserve volume in Razai dual volume and over here you see anatomic dead space is shown and in that we know we now know that 150 ml of air remains so now we are moving on the eighth point of our discussion now here we are discussing about expiratory reserve volume now see if you inhale normally you are you are breathing normally and then exhale forcibly as possible okay once you inhale normal you breathe normal and then forcefully you try your best and try to exhale to expire out maximum air from your body from your lungs then you will be able to push considerably more air in addition to 500 ml of tidal volume and this volume this extra air that you can expel out that you can exhale out then that ex that air that you can expire out from your lung <clears throat> possibly that air volume is 1200 ml in case you are male and if you are female then forcefully you can expire 700 ml of air so <clears throat> this air volume that you have after your normal inhalation you have forcibly exhale this air volume is known as expiratory reserve volume so in case of men it is 1200 ml and in case of female it is 700 ml so now once again so you remember this values okay 1200 and 700 so this is this is this is 1200 this is 500 and this is 31 hundred in case of men okay so you try you make the total okay and when we discuss so when we discuss rv one more value is going to we are going to add okay now now we are in ninth point we are discussing about f f e v1 okay now what is this f e v1 so full form of f e v1 is forced expiratory volume in one second and this this volume is the volume of air that can be exhaled from the lungs in one second okay so in one second how much volume of air a person can exhale that is known as forced expiratory volume and it is not normal but with maximal with maximal effort so forcefully forcefully how much air that a person can exhale in one second that volume is known as post expiratory volume 
वन एफ ई वी वन ओके एंड दैट इज फॉलोड बाय आफ्टर आफ्टर अवर मैक्सिमल इनहलेशन सो फर्स्ट फर्स्ट व्हाट यू डू फर्स्ट फर्स्ट यू डू द मैक्सिमम इनहलेशन ओके मैक्सिमम इनहलेशन यू डू एंड देन इन वन सेकंड यू पुट ऑल योर एफर्ट एंड यू एक्सपेल as much air as possible okay so you are putting your best effort to expel air from your lung in one second time that is known as force expiratory volume 1 now a uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease that is known as copd greatly reduces this fe v1 so person who is suffering from this copd disease is not able to forcefully expel air the reason is uh, the copd increases the airway resistance okay so the respiratory organs or the respiratory tract is impacted so person is not able to expel the air okay forcefully that's why now moving on the 10th point of our discussion so here now we are going to discuss about the rv okay rasi dual volume rv now what is rv now even after the expiratory reserve volume is exhale some air considerable air remains in the lung you try your best to exhale the air even though some air is remaining still remaining in our lung and this is happening because of the sub atmospheric intra pleural pressure and this pressure is keeping the alveoli slightly inflated so the alveoli remain enlarged or the bulgy okay inflated means inflated means uh, filled with air so alveoli still they are even if you try your best to ex- expel the air out from your out from your lung then also some air still remaining in your alveoli and some air remains in non collapsible airways let's say some air is remaining in the alveolar duct or the respiratory bronchiole it is possible okay so how much air is present in your alveoli or the alveolar duct or some other places like the respiratory bronchiole okay so this volume is not measurable by spirometer and this volume is known as rasi rasi dual volume rv and this this amount is the value or the amount of rv is in men it is 1200 ml and in case of female it is 1100 ml okay so it is a reserve air volume we can say it remains in the lung okay so it is 1200 so this rv okay so this is this is 1200 okay so now you make the total let's see the spirogram okay so you will you will get the idea about all the values to so see 
first of all what is this figure so spirogram of lung volume and capacities okay so tidal volume tidal volume 500 ml okay then expiratory reserve volume in case of men 1200 then residual residual volume in case of men 1200 and female 1100 okay then inspiratory reserve volume in case of men 3100 in case of female 1900 ml okay so now you make the total okay with the calculator let's say we are doing it for the male or men <coughs> then so you add uh 3100 plus 500 okay so that is becoming 3600 3600 plus 1200 so 3 4800 and you add this 1200 so that becomes 6000 ml in case of men so this is the lung volume okay 6000 ml is the total lung volume that we are getting finally okay now one more point is there this is the extra point we can say discussion of lung volume is completed now one extra point is there see if thoracic cavity is open then the intra pleural pressure rises and it becomes equal to atmospheric pressure when the thoracic cavity is open intra pleural pressure rises and it becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure and this pressure is forcing some of the residual volume so this pressure this increased pressure when the thoracic cavity is open it is pressurizing the reserve air so now since the person has expelled some of the air from the residual volume so now the air which is remaining is known as the minimal volume now this minimal volume of air provides a medical and legal tool for determining whether a baby is born dead that means baby has born still born or died after birth so in case of a situation that the let's say in a hospital the baby is born and after the delivery the doctors of the hospital inform the parent that that your <coughs> son or your girl that newborn is born dead so now the it is possible that parents are not going to believe and they lodge a police complaint against the hospital authorities then in this case how to how to find out that the baby was born dead okay so in this situation the the presence of minimal volume in the lung is a very handy tool in this situation now what they are doing in the post mortem room uh, <clears throat> they will demonstrate placing a piece of lung in water okay and observing that the piece of lung is floating in the water or not now what happened during the embryonic development okay or the fetal lung there is no air present in the lung 
so during the embryonic development and the fetal or the fetal lung is having no air so if the baby has born dead or the baby is still born so that that means there will be no air is present in the baby's body okay so in the in that case the lung are not going to float okay so when the piece of lung <coughs> will put on water it will immediately reaches to the bottom of the water okay and this will prove that the baby was born dead okay <coughs> so this thing this is the 11th point now now i will i would like to show you some uh, important figure for you so that one by one i will show you see these are some formula even though we have not discussed today and in next lecture we will discuss the lung capacity this we have seen this is the figure for spirometer and here this one okay the four lung volumes are shown the key is given okay and the lung capacity formulas spirogram is shown it's a small table pulmonary volume and capacity you can compare for male and female okay this one and this one this is a very nice one okay very informative most of the point are covered in this spirogram okay we are focusing on lung volume and right hand side if you are interested you can see this values for lung capacities but in my next next lecture we will discuss this lung capacities then this one dead space we have discussed and this one is also nice one spiro graphic record for a male okay and this is this is a very handy table so just in case uh, during your exam time you can prepare all the lung volume and also the value for the lung capacities are also given so the table is in two part okay in first part the respiratory volumes are given and in second part respiratory capacities are given and this okay so here you will get the idea anatomical dead space okay so with this we have completed this presentation lecture on lung volumes or respiratory volumes i hope you have enjoyed this presentation lecture and i also hope that this presentation lecture will be helpful in your exam preparation and also in your studies my name is manish kosti sir i am from amdavad india bye bye namaste